chapter we're going to talk about um, limit and continuity and um this is continuation of math 252 that is multiplicable calculus and with limits and continuity what you need to know is that um let's read something here by a neighborhood of a point u naught being s naught or y naught is an element of r squared which mean an open index with a center u naught and a radius of that so all these are ideas from calculus with analysis that is the deleted neighborhood and um, neighborhood right you have the uh, delta neighborhood and um, the deleted neighborhood i get in the tears so i think they're trying to make you understand what deleted neighborhood as in because with um a neighborhood is you being a neighbor you live in a place so you are included but the deleted neighborhood you are not part of the neighborhood so as you can see i've made some enlightenment this is the equation for the um deleted neighborhood which means that u is an element of r square but um the absolute value of human which you not should be greater than zero and less than the delta right yeah so when you talk about all this you need to understand all this about the neighborhood and the deleted neighborhood and it just give you an overview so this is just for you to understand now the main thing that we are here is the limit of a point that's the limit and the continuity so when you talk about a limit what does it mean a limit is uh, let's take a point you not being an element of r squared it's called the limit of a point if d is a subset of r squared if every deleted neighborhood of u not contains at least one point from d and this is just the um not the mathematical way but how we can express the mathematical understanding using the definition in english so all these are proven proven but what you mean is that um i'm going to make you understand what it means with limits so as um limit for this what you must do is that this is it so we have the um this is for the single variable and this is the um the uh, multivariable calculus that's the multivariables right which means x and y but with the single variable they're going to give you from calculus analysis they're going to give you just x value then you find uh, the limit but in this case they're going to give x and y value which is approaching to something and then you didn't you don't you just need to what substitute the information into the function given to you but note that sometimes that you need to know that sometimes you're going to apply lupita rule because you cannot sometimes you cannot directly put in the value into the um you cannot directly put in the value into the um the function straightforward but you need to use lupita rule to get the function to exist right yes so now definition of limit we are still on definition of limit and these are all um general definition of limit but the understanding is that you need to know how to do the substitution and use the value for it so how do you say that for a limit to exist one thing for a limit to exist right if a limit exists that means that the limit is what unique right so put this in your head that for a limit to exist that limit is should be unique when you talk about limit being existing it means that you should have a value of it right you should get an actual value when you substitute the value into the function you should get a value which means that the limit exists so and if it exists then it's unique right so we are going to take one example this is just an example they prove it but all the same what you just need to know is that they gave us that the function of x and y is equal to square root of one minus x squared minus y squared which means that right and they gave us that we are x and y is approaching zero what do you do you just substitute x and y into the function which you put zero here you put zero here and at the end you're going to get square root of one which is one that's why you had the answer to be one as simple as that right it's very simple and um this is just proven you just it's proven right for you to understand the thing um so limit along curves right limit along curves if c is a smooth parametric curve in two space or three space that is represented by this one but this, you're just going to do some um i don't know some transformation but all the same what you are trying to prove is just um let's use this for um uh, understanding of what you're trying to prove i'm going to make you understand um what we're trying to prove so with this let's take this function which is the function of x and y which is um it involves x and y and you know that this represents what z right yeah because this is multivariable calculus right and it's we are using variables now so they gave us a function of um x which is occurring at a longer curve which is x y minus x y over x squared plus y squared for us we are just finding um the limit along x axis and please i'm going to explain something the limit along x axis meaning 
on x axis, what is zero is y. So y is equal to zero on x axis. So here you're going to get y being equal to zero. On y axis, what are you going to get? X is equal to zero. So you just do substitution and put the values inside and you just find it. Because on x axis, that means that you are just going to put you are going to make y zero here, y zero here, and making this whole equation, you're going to get zero over zero, which is what? It's just zero. And and y is equal to zero, you are going to put the values inside and you're going to get zero, right? But with C, the line y is equal to x, you're just going to put the values inside and just do that. And y is equal to negative x, you put the values inside. And the parabola, y is equal to x, so you're just going to put the values inside. That's all. So just doing substitution, that's all we are going to do here. It's just substitution. And for this limit, for a long curve, for the limit to exist, that means that this whole should have the same value. So same value, right? If they are not having the same value, that means that the limit what does not what exist. So they should have the same value. That means that that initiates that the limit exists, right? Let's go down there. Are you getting it? Okay, so let's move to the next one. So when you go to a race, and sometimes they use substitution, but with this, it's not substitution you're going to use. Just understand the concept and put the values inside, right? Yes. So you're just going to do substitution, right? And with this, A, we had zero. B, we had zero. C, we had zero, but with D, okay, C, we had negative one over two. That means that this limit does not exist. Since the values, all the values are not the same, that means that they don't exist. For it to exist, right, or for it to be unique, all should have the same value. You should keep that in your head, right? So when you did that, just substitute. Just know that when they are just going to substitute in, wherever you see Y, you're going to put X squared inside. And with it, wherever you see, we're going to put negative x inside, and then you put the values inside. So after you've done that, then you what? Put the value as the x approaches to zero. So first, you need to write the limit as as the written is here, right? So limit as x m approaches to, and the function given to us was given to us. But in this case, you're using y is equal to negative x. So wherever you see y, you put negative x there. Then you what? You simplify. Then you choose because it will turn into what? You're going to have everything in what x value. Then you just take when x is equal to zero, and that's all. And after you've done that and you get the same value for all, that means that the limit exists. But if you don't get the same value for all, that means that the limit does not exist, right? So the general limit of a function of two variables, you know I explained this, that all this is what we need. You just get the um, the function and what is approaching to, then you substitute inside. But all the cases, you should know that sometimes you use the root root or it. We we'll solve an um, example in, in my next video, and I'll make you understand very well. It's simple. And also, uh, in our exams, for this question, we had a lot in the midterm, and it's it's very simple because you're just doing substitution, right? And um, it's time-consuming, so you need to know how to use a calculator. You just punch the values inside fast by And be careful. In exams, they sometimes confuse us a lot, you know, whilst you are doing the confuser with the value because you need to take your time, take your calculator, and then substitute it and get the answer very correct. Because in the midterm, we had a lot of this question, and it's... It was plenty. I don't know. It was enormous. A lot. Because it's very simple for you to get the limit of a point. Right? Yeah. So, um, for, for, for us to understand, this is um, something you should know. If um, The whole thing is that, right? Um, you should understand it. The whole thing is that when you're finding a limit, you do substitution. Sometimes you use Lipitaru. Sometimes for a limit to exist at a, a longer curve, all those parameters using the parabol parabolic, um, that's why it's got x squared, using y is equal to negative x, using y is equal to, um, on the x axis, on y axis, y is equal to this and that, then, then you verify. If the answer is correct, you are good to go. So, these are examples, that is 1 to what? 27, yes. In my next video, um, I'm going to solve this example in that. So, hope to see you in my next video so that you know how to evaluate all this. Thank you very much for watching this video.